Hello, am I audible? Yes, yeah. Okay. So we will start the today's session. Good evening, everyone. My name is Ubaid Tari, and. Uh, Every week I am taking this uh, Neptel problem solving session of Cell Culture Technologies course. Some, some of you uh, may be regularly joining uh, this session. And uh, in today's session I will be taking the week 5 assignments of uh, this course. So we will directly uh, start with the, the questions. So first question is, what is the characteristic shape of hippocampal neurons? You all uh, can answer in the chat books. I can see uh, your answers. After that, we will uh, discuss about uh, this question. Yes, uh, all of you have answered correctly. The characteristic shape of hippocampal neurons is the pyramidal shape. Now we will discuss about this question. But, uh, what is hippocampus? So hippo, hippocampus is the uh, it's it is the part of the brain, and its major role uh, uh, is uh, it's is, its major role is in the functioning of the brain and its major role is in the memory and navigation so it's a multi-layered structure composed of uh, primarily of densely packed pyramidal cells and because of these uh, para pyramidal cells uh, my it is it's uh, the, it is, the pyramidal shape is because of these pyramidal cells so it plays a, a major role in formation of new memories and also, uh, it has a ma major role in process of lear learning. It also uh, regulates emotions, behavior of the person. So these, uh, this hippocampus, it's made up of uh, these pyramidal cells and the exons extend from uh, these uh, pyramidal cells. these exons they extend as a bundle of fibers to other portions of the brain these pyramidal uh, shaped cells or pyramidal shaped neurons they are also present in other parts of the brain apart from the hippocampus such as the cerebral cortex and these uh, hippocampal neurons or pyramidal neurons they are excitatory in function they are excitatory neurons neurons Now, uh, moving to the uh, next question. Next question is, Pepin is a dash derived from dash. The answers are proteolytic enzyme. Pepin is a proteolytic enzyme. It's derived from papaya. Second is Pepin is the proteolytic enzyme. And it is uh, derived from milk. Third is papain is a lactate dehydrogenase, and it is derived from papaya. And fourth is it's a lactate dehydrogenase and derived from milk. Yes, the correct answer is papain is a proteolytic enzyme, and it is derived from papaya. So as I already said, the papain is a proteolytic enzyme. It is also called uh, papaya proteinase. What the proteolytic enzyme do? 
it will lyse the proteins or it will break down the proteins. So it is present in papaya or, it is, or you can say it is derived from uh, papaya. So uh, the procedure uh, by which it is isolated from papaya. So it is produced as a crude dried material by collecting the latex from the fruit of the papaya tree. Uh, as I already said, it dissociates cells in the first step of cell culture. For example, uh, you want to uh, uh, you have you have the tissue sample and you want to you want to uh, culture the tissue or culture the cells which which are derived from this uh, tissue. So this papain can be used to disrupt the dissociate the cells uh, from from the tissue sample. And these cells can be can be collected and they can be uh, cultured in a tissue culture. But that's why uh, this uh, papain has a role in uh, tissue culture. It is a proteolytic enzyme. There are also other proteolytic enzymes which are used uh, in the cell culture, like the trypsin collagenase, which also disrupt the proteins. Moving to the th third question. Third question is he in hemocytometer volume of ma one square which ma is one mm into one mm uh, area and uh, what is the volume of this one square? Only few of you have answered this question. If anyone knows. So the answer is 100 uh, nanoliter. The 1 mm square it occupies the 100 nanoliter. Now uh, in, in the next slide I will uh, show you the calculation how. So this is the hemocytometer. So hemocytometer has actually uh, 9 squares or 9 compartments. Uh, uh, like this one, two, three, and uh, three in the middle and three in the lower. And usually these uh, compartments which are in the corners, uh, this uh, B, C, D, and E. Uh, these compartments are used to count the cells or blood cells or other uh, types of cells. And the A compartment is also sometimes used to count the cells. So originally, uh, this hemocytometer it was uh, invented by Louis Charles. Earlier, it was used to count the blood cells. Nowadays, uh, it is used to count all types of uh, animal cells, uh, sperm, human cells, or yeast can be count. Number of yeast can also be counted on the hemocytometer. So. Uh, the scales which are present in uh, this the, the four corner scales actually all these scales have the one mm diameter if you uh, can see my cursor this is the one mm length and this is the one mm length so it is the one mm square uh, is the area of these circles and all the other circles like it is shown here and uh, this uh, the circles in the corner they are divided into 16 small uh, squares and these uh, squares have the zero point if you divide uh, this uh, one uh, millimeter by four so this square has a 0 0.25 uh, uh, millimeter uh, of millimeter square area and uh, this the square in the middle the a square it's also divided into the four scales which have the 0 0.25 uh, mm uh, 2.5 mm uh, diam uh, 2.5 mm square mm square area but this uh, large this square is also divided into four smaller squares so uh, this a this it is usually used uh, to count the smaller objects my, my it is uh, known that if the size of the sample or size of the cell is less than 10 nanometer so it is advisable to count on in the a square 
so that uh, you can easily re relate uh, to the size of the this of, of the cell but it can also uh, if the size is less than 10 uh, mm it can also be counted in the corner squares but it's advisable to count in the a square a square is a complete uh, if if it is seen in the higher magnification it's a it has uh, for uh, it has these 16 squares and all the cells can be counted in in the a square only so now i will tell you uh, the counting uh, technique or counting procedure which cells we have to count and which cells we have to eliminate so if we consider any of these squares a b c d this is the single square containing 16 or 19 squares so if the cell is touching the top uh, or uh, right or this right side it, it will not be count it uh, uh, sorry it is we have to count this if it is uh, touching this top or it is touching this right side but if the cells is uh, any cell is touching uh, this outer bottom layer and uh, this left layer, we we do not have to count on this cell but uh, this uh, counting procedure is applicable to uh, this line only outer line inside the we have to count all the cells so what is the procedure uh, so for example we have the cells in a while we have suspended them in a in an append of our while so uh, when if we want to count how many cells are present in for example they are suspended in a 1 ml or 2 ml if you want to know how many cells are suspended in in the while or in the append of so we can count the cells in these sections for example b c a d e when we count uh, the cells in all these sections then uh, we will uh, get the mean well, we will uh, add all these and divide by 5 and the count add the count of all these and divide by 5 so we will get the mean total mean in a uh, in a one square and this is the total set count uh, we have to multiply it with the dilution factor for example if we have uh, one ml uh, this if we are taking the sample from the one ml tube and we have diluted that for example uh, one is to one with the dye or uh, so we have to uh, multiply it dilution factor if it is one to one we have to multiply it two so dilution factor is my we have to dilute it two times and we have to multiply uh, 10 raised power 4 every time and we have to uh, divide by uh, number of squares counted so uh, here the number of squares counted is already divided in the equation so here in the total cells counted you can add all the cells counted in all the five square five squares so uh, from where this uh, 10 raised power 4 comes for example every time you uh, uh, you multiply this 10 raised power 4 so this i will uh, show you in the next slide your my you can also understand it's in this slide only for example uh, this uh, one square it has the uh, area of one multiple of one that's one centimeter square and it is known that if the petri plate is if the uh, this uh, glass slide is placed on this or my cover slip is placed on this every time uh, we uh, we count uh, in the hemocytometer we have to place the cover slip on on the squares and after that we have to load the sample below the cover slip here like here we, we will we will add the sample and this sample will disperse in all the squares and it is known that the height of the sample height of wool height of the, the when you add the uh, when you add the liquid the height will be 0 0.1 mm here the length is one mm. uh, this another length is one mm uh, and uh, and the height will be 0 0.1 mm so overall it will be 0 0.1 mm cube will be the volume of this sample and this 0 0.1 mm cube if we uh, if we can convert it into the ml 0 0.1 mm cube it will be 10 raised power 4 ml so every time 10 raised power 4 mm which is also the which uh, it will be multiplied in this equation 
So in this slide, I am also showing that uh, here it is a one mm. Uh, this is the uh, these are the corner uh, squares, and the, this whole length is one mm, and the length of one square is 0 0.25 mm. And usually the cells which have the size of uh, size more than the 10 micrometer, they are counted in the side squares like WBCs. But the cells which have the uh, which have the smaller size. They are counted in this A section. This is the magnified image of only this A square. And the here the whole length is 1 mm, this whole length. And every time we, uh, if we need to count the smaller cells in this A section, we have to use the higher magnification. For example, if it is 10x, we have to use 20x or 40x to count the cells in, in this uh, A section. So usually RBC, Z, strand sperm uh, cells, they are count they are counted in this A section and the area of uh, this smaller square which inside this square is 0.05 m so it will uh, the smaller squares will give the better idea uh, about the uh, size and it will be easier to count also so moving to the next question which of these antibodies is used to label mostly neural cells? Neuronal cells or neutral cells. Can anyone answer? A uh, part is MHC, MAP2, ISLAT, and T R Y R. So the answer is MAP2. So can anyone tell me uh, why uh, do we need to design an antibody for any type of cell? Let it be the new neuronal cell. Why? Anyone? You can unmute yourself. You can unmute and uh, you can see or you can also write in the chat box. Why we need an antibody to label the neural cells or any type of cell like macrophage or WBC, cardiac cell, fibroblast. You may be knowing that uh, every cell in our body uh, is a unique. Every cell has some unique markers that are present in, uh, in the cell. My, some markers are always present in the cell in a, my, my, in, a, my, in a normal condition. And there are also some markers which are expressed in the disease condition or which are maybe in, in the normal condition, their expression is they are very less in number on the cell and in the disease condition, they, their expression is high or they are in, they are in a more number on the cell so uh, these uh, markers or markers these markers are actually proteins because they are present in the cell membrane so these proteins uh, they they act as a markers and anti, if we design some antibodies that are labeled to some fluorescently tagged uh, uh, fluorescently tagged entity and these antibodies, uh, they will be, uh, they will help us to visualize, or they will help us to identify some particular type of cells in a pool of cells. Or, for example, if some uh, marker it is expressed in some particular condition, in a disease condition, or in some particular state of, of a cell. So, if we can also uh, give antibodies which are uh, which will bind to that marker, and if that marker is highly expressed, we will get the fluorescence because of the antibody. So we will be able to visualize the, uh, we will be able to visualize or we will be able to study the disease conditions or we will be able to know uh, which types of cells are present uh, in, if we have the different types of cells present uh, in, a, in a culture. So here also, uh, in case of neural cells, uh, there are some uh, important markers which are specific to the neural cells so 
if uh, if the antibody if if the antibody is designed uh, for these markers it will bind to these proteins and these antibodies are uh, labeled with uh, different fluorescently labeled uh, fluorescently mole fluorescent molecules and it will give the fluorescence and we will be able to visualize uh, the protein so in the in the answers there was a one protein map2 which is the microtubule acetic protein it is a important uh, component of the neuro new neuronal cytoskeleton so might present in the neural cytoskeleton and, and it has a important role in uh, nervous system nervous system development so if we uh, treat uh, the neurons with this antibody map2 we will be able to visualize the neurons there are also other uh, specific uh, markers or specific proteins like uh, tubulin 3 this tubulin beta 3 tubb3 it is also uh, present in neurons and it is a it is specific for different uh, neurons which have the which are in the differentiation state so there are there, there are also other markers which are not that much specific uh, like uh, neuronal nuclear and nuclear protein which is present in the nucleus and it uh, antibodies uh, uh, against this can also be used to detect the uh, neuronal cells moving to the next question which of these is not a development stage in rats answer so there are four answers one is the embryonic prenatal parental and another is neonatal so this is not only uh, the case my these states which they have mentioned but these developmental states they are not on, only in uh, rats they are also in humans and other uh, organisms also Today, very few uh, of few participants are actually giving the answers as compared to earlier, as compared to earlier sessions. So the uh, correct answer is parental. So this is not any embryonic stage. So I will tell you about uh, these stages. So. After the fertilization, uh, there is a after um, after fertilization to and four weeks after the birth, but they, they, this phase is called prenatal phase. There is a phase called is it is called a prenatal phase. And this prenatal phase is also divided into different phases. For example, germinal phase. It uh, germinal phase. It uh, it is uh, the duration of this is from zero to two weeks. Then is the embryonic phase in which embryonic development occurs and it occurs from uh, 2 to 8 weeks. This is the embryonic phase. After uh, there is a fetal phase, uh, it is from 9 weeks to the birth and at the time of birth. Uh, this birth is also in the prenatal phase and in the pre after prenatal uh, after the birth, postnatal phase also starts, but this neonatal phase it is it's also in the prenatal and postnatal and it it starts after the birth of the baby so this neonatal it starts from birth to the four weeks and after that uh, uh, there is a postnatal period which also includes the neonatal period and it starts from birth to the six, uh, six months these are just the terms that uh, you can remember the difference between postnatal prenatal or embryonic neonatal so <clears throat> this this may be important in some of your exams to remember these terms so uh, another question is which of these protein misfolding and aggregation is linked to Alzheimer's disease answer yes both A and B
Yes, the answer is amyloid beta and tau. These are the two proteins which upon misfolding leads to the Alzheimer's disease. So Alzheimer's disease is the most common uh, dementia which is usually present in elderly individuals and it uh, usually occurs because of the accumulation of abnormally folded amyloid beta and tau proteins in the brain. So there are also other uh, neurodegenerative disorders like Parkinson's disease, Huntington's disease and uh, all of these sclerosis. And in all uh, these, there is a uh, there is an abnormal folding of different types of proteins in all these cases. But in case of Alzheimer's disease, there is the abnormal misfolding of these amyloid beta and tau proteins. And to the due to this uh, abnormal misfolding, neurodegeneration occurs, and which leads to this condition known as Alzheimer's disease or dementia. You can also remember the proteins uh, which are uh, abnormally misfolded in other diseases also, other neurological diseases also. Another question is, which of these brain regions is associated with memory and learning? This question is, was also, uh, this question is also related to question number one. Yes, the answer is hippocampus. So uh, here in this picture, I have shown the different regions of the brain. And here uh, the answer of our question is this hippocampus. And this hippocampus, it's, uh, uh, it is known to uh, control the memory or memory and navigation. So uh, as I already said in the first question that it plays a, a role in formation of new memories and also the process of the learning, process of perception. For example, uh, if uh, if you are learning the new things or some someone is telling you uh, some concept or if uh, how much uh, quickly you grasp that concept, it, it is determined by this hippocampus. And it also regulates the emotions, behavior, how you react in different conditions. This all is controlled by the hippocampus. And uh, this hippocampus, it also uh, regulates the septal memory, which means that uh, to keep the track of objects. For example, uh, if uh, to, for example, if you are cycling or you are walking, so uh, you position your body uh, accordingly related to the objects. If there is some obstacle, well, you can move your body and this all movement is controlled by the this hippocampus. Uh, in, in this slide, there are also uh, other, uh, other areas of the brain and their function is also mentioned. For example, basal ganglia, it controls the movement, uh, learning, habit, uh, cognition and emotions. Uh, thalamus also uh, regulates sleep, consciousness and alertness. Hypothalamus, it controls body temperature, hunger, fatigue and sleep. Amygdala, uh, as uh, someone has also answered uh, the amygdala, amygdala also con controls the memory, decision making and emotional uh, responses. So I think here uh, the answer should be A and B, but they have not mentioned uh, two. But uh, they have not mentioned uh, A and B. But uh, I think uh, the more appropriate answer is hippocampus if the both answers are given because hippo hippocampus has a more role as compared to amygdala. Now another question is new basal media is buffered by
base amino acids oxygen sodium bicarbonate and glucose so the answer is sodium bicarbonate so a neural uh, neurobasal media uh, it is a basal media to meet uh, some specific uh, requirements of the neuronal cells Uh, because of these uh, neuro basically it is actually a dalbecos it is a dmm dalbecos modified eagles media but uh, there are there are some uh, special uh, requirements of the neural cells uh, there are some specific components which are added in this for for the uh, growth of the neural cells so it allows the long term maintenance of the uh, of the normal phenotype and growth of the neural cells and it was originally formulated by uh, Brewer et al to support the you can you mute mute yourself who is who is talking So uh, it was originally synthesized for the survival of the hippocampal ne neurons, as in the in the normal media, these uh, new these nerve cells, they will not be able to grow in the in the in the cell culture. I will tell you the reason for this also. So uh, the reason is this point: culture without uh, the need of astrocyte feeder layer. Actually, uh, the neurons which are present. Uh, in the in our body like in the brain or uh, other uh, parts of the body these uh, neurons in in the brain apart from the neurons there is a more uh, number of the cells which support the neurons for example astrocytes or glial cells so uh, it is known that these astrocytes uh, they give the nourishment they give the specific factors for the neurons to grow and divide so that's why the in, in the cell culture if we only isolate the neurons let it be the hippocampal neurons or other neurons of uh, the brain if we culture them in the cell culture they will not they will not grow properly because the nourishment we are giving them the media but the signaling and nourishment which they are getting from the supporter cells like the astrocytes or glial cells it is very important for uh, their proper growth and proliferation so the same i have written here like astrocytes outnumber neurons in the human brain and they play a key role in uh, uh, numerous functions within the central nervous system in uh, and these uh, and uh, they, they uh, provide some of uh, the molecules like glutamate, uh, different ions like calcium, potassium. And uh, these, uh, these astrocytes are important uh, for hemostasis, defense against oxidative and uh, nitro, uh, nitrogen stress, energy storage, mitochondrial biogenesis formation. Uh, these astrocytes are tissue uh, repair, angiogenesis, neurogenesis synapsis modulation ma, 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 from from these points you can uh, you, you you can uh, this uh, you can know that that uh, without astrocytes uh, these uh, the the function of uh, these uh, neurons cannot function the properly so in the cell culture we have to provide uh, uh, earlier we uh, earlier the scientists by providing the astrocyte feeder layer or astrocyte layer while grown in the cell culture and on the astrocyte layer the these neurons were grown but nowadays because of these neurobasal media which contains the different factors which provide which are actually provided by these astrocytes and glial cells and by the help of these uh, by the help of this neurobasal media so we can culture the neurons without the need of these astrocyte feeder layer So, uh, moving to the next question. Before moving to the next question, I will uh, tell you the uh, one concept of xeno-free media. What, what, 
does it mean the zeno free media so zeno free uh, media is also the culture media and it does not contain the non human derived components so zeno free media it only uh, contain the components that will be the serum which derived from the blood or other components amino acids or different types of proteins or growth factors all uh, these are human derived so zeno uh, free culture is a cultured media which does which does not contain non human components so uh, zeno free media does not need serum free animal free or blood compo com component free but there is a uh, confusion that uh, a lot of students have the confusion that zeno free media means the serum free media or animal free media uh, animal component sorry animal component free media or blood component free media but this it may contain the serum but only the human derived serum it may contain some uh, uh, some amino acids or some proteins which uh, may be human derived human is also the animal so it's not the whole animal free so if any component is added in this media so it should be derived from the humans so what is the use of these zeno free media it is often used by researchers working to translate the therapy for the research to the from the research to the clinic if uh, someone uh, is uh, looking in the direction of clinical translation of uh, some therapy so uh, th those therapy if it uh, needs to culture if need if it needs the in vitro experimentation so in the in vitro experimentation this zeno free uh, culture uh, media is used so that the, so that the clinical translation is uh, so that it, uh, this it, it might it is more one step ahead in for the clinical translation as as we are providing the only human derived components in the cell culture media so actually the question was this so now uh, after uh, I, i have told you about zeno free media now you can tell me uh, some of uh, about some of these terms are they correct or incorrect first a so you can write in the chat box uh, about the a term write about the only a term uh, you you have to write true or false so this a term does not uh, my zeno free media does not contain ingredient ingredients derived from non human animals answer is it true or false sandhya has given uh, Answer very quickly. A to E are true. All others. What about the A part only? Does no uh, zeno free media does not contain in ingredients derived from non-human animals. So it is correct. Uh, it says it does not contain the ingredients from other animals. So A part is correct. Now the B part. does not contain recombinant materials made from non human animal uh, dna sequences my first part was the ingredients directly from the animals non human animals and second is the recombinant materials for example the some components which are not directly from the animal but they are made uh, using the recombinant technology in the animals for example some antibodies are made in the hearts or some other proteins are made in the different animals as a host so this is also correct uh, these these points are also uh, some important points rel related to the zeno free media so you should remember that so here is a point to remember that if the material is a recombinant material it is not directly from the animals animal source but it is made in the animal body as a host if the re some recombinant protein is made in the animal body as a uh, keeping the animal as a host well, this should not be also present in the zeno free media if if it is present so the media will not be the zeno free so c part is many zeno free media may contain purified processed or unprocessed materials from human sources this is correct as the original definition of zeno free media it contains the proteins from human sources only so here you can also learn that 
it may contain purified, processed, or unprocessed. Maybe, uh, for example, the uh, one one is a defined media which has a defined composition. Another is the undefined components which do not have the the composition of the components are not defined. So undefined components which are from the human source only that can be present in the xenofree media. And E part is xenofree media, xenofree medium. The animal derived components may have been used as a raw material at the secondary or tertiary level of manufacturing unless otherwise indicated. So uh, this point is also true and this is the important point to remember that if uh, the for example uh, you are using some component in the these you know free media as I already said it should not be directly isolated from the animals or it should not be made by the recombinant technology in the animals but if some raw material is used from the animals for the synth synthesis or the manufacturing of the some antibodies or proteins maybe uh, at the first step and after second and tertiary step we are getting our uh, some protein which is used in the xenofree media so that's uh, uh, that is permissible so uh, if some animal derived component is used as a raw material that is permissible but the traces of that animal derived component which is used for the synthesis uh, it should not be present in the final protein so all uh, this a to z is correct so uh, these are also the important points ap apart from these i have uh, mentioned here so you should also remember all these points related to the xenofree media Another question is L15 media contains dash but lacks dash. A part is sodium pyruvate, it contains sodium pyruvate and lacks sodium bicarbonate. B part is uh, it contains sodium tartrate and lacks sodium bicarbonate. C part is it contains sodium glutamate and lacks sodium bicarbonate. Fourth is contains sodium pyruvate. And lacks sodium bicarbonate. They they have given the two answers actually same sodium pyruvate sodium okay oh sorry one is a sodium carbonate only yes. So the answer is D part sodium pyruvate sodium bicarbonate. So L15 media it contains sodium pyruvate but lacks sodium bicarbonate. In the earlier uh, uh, sessions uh, I have told you about I think this L15 media I think in the first or second session. So it does not contain the sodium uh, bicarbonate. So this L15 media But it's uh, this alpha in media it supports the growth of uh, hip to uh, monkey kidney cells or HeLa cells HeLa cell line and it is also used in the culture of primary explants uh, which are isolated from embryonic or adult human tissue so this l15 media it is the uh, same as the Dalbecos modified equals media but it is buffered by the uh, the sodium pyruvate there are also other buffer components like phosphates free uh, basic amino acids in instead of sodium bicarbonate actually the sodium bicarbonate is used in normal dmem media for for the ph control and for the ph control there in case of uh, normal dmem this sodium bicarbonate only controls the ph in the presence of co2 to so 5 percent co2 supply should be continuously given to the tissue culture uh, so so that uh, the pH uh, will be maintained uh, in in the physiological range. So here uh, in 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 this L15 media, so uh, the sodium bicarbonate is not added. So here the CO2 is not uh, also required to maintain the pH. So 
in in this alpha feed media higher levels of uh, galactose and sodium pyruvate are added which will help to maintain the physiological ph or uh, which will help to control the ph in in the physiological range so uh, here another point is also it's designed for cell growth in environment without co2 if some cells needed to be uh, cultured without the co2 like hela cells or hep2 cells so uh, they they uh, need to be uh, cultured in the l15 media which does not contain bicarbonate and because of uh, of because uh, bicarbonate is not present so we don't uh, need to the we don't need the co2 incubator to culture these cells someone is joining now after completion of the session so this was all about uh, the questions so every day when i take the session i upload the video uh, in in the in my youtube channel so you can check <coughs> this uh, youtube channel uh, so if you missed any part of the session so you can see in the video here and also there are other uh, other contents or there are other lectures you can also they may be also helpful to you so thank you so much for joining the session if you have uh, any more questions so you can ask in the chat box or you can unmute, unmute yourself do anyone have any questions please tell the some pattern objective or subject data okay i think it will be both objective and subjective type but i uh, don't know exactly so i earlier also suggested you so write uh, your query in the discussion form have you uh, asked in the discussion form ask in the discussion form uh, there is a another ta of this group which is the main ta so actually uh, he has a uh, more clear information regarding this any other questions related to the subject so if there are no questions i will conclude the session thank you so much for joining uh, i will see you in uh, next week at 7 pm next tuesday do do join the session thank you thank you so much everyone thank you everyone thank you